that's going on in the world these days. You might be looking for a moment of peace or better skills to communicate with others. Here to teach us a technique called compassionate listening. Please welcome Susan Park now. It's good to have you, you here. So what is compassionate listening? Compassionate listening is a practice to help us con connect at a kind of a deeper heart-to-heart -heart level. So it's a set of practices that you can learn and practice. It's a uh, number of different activities that a group could use if they're in conflict. It's a healing gift that we can offer to one another if someone's suffering or struggling. And very importantly, it's really a personal practice. So for me, it's something that I work on every day. I don't think we ever master it. So where did this concept come from? It began with our project called the Middle East Citizen Diplomacy Project, and we had this dream of going to the Middle East and helping to bring peace by bringing Palestinians and Israelis together to, that we would listen to all sides. And we soon, soon learned that sounds good, but we really did not know how to listen in a polarized situation. People were getting triggered. So we went back to the beginning to try to really study. We did some deep work with Jean Knudsen Hoffman, who was a Quaker who had worked with Thich Nhat Hanh and learned to listen with our spiritual ears, is mm -hmm. what we really called it. Mm -hmm. Road tested it as our project evolved in the Middle East, and we also had work in uh, Germany, bringing Germans and Jews together. So it was really road tested, and through all of that work, we developed our core practices. So this is you know, obviously important in the world today and mm. in uh, Thanksgiving, which is coming up in November. So we can have family exactly tables, a very family important table. place. So yes. how, what, what are the, the components of compassionate listening? We identified five core practices. So the first one we call cultivating compassion. And compassion, it's, it's like a renewable resource. We can really develop more of it, a lot through practice of appreciation and gratitude and just nurture our hearts and begin with self-compassion. So as the compassion grows, which is something we humans are really designed for, then we can start to move out into the world and our next practice would be to what we call develop the fair witness. Can I notice the, my own condition? Am I triggered? Am I upset? Am I really listening? Is my heart open? Is it closed? So I can manage that and not just be reactive. Mm -hmm. So as I develop that capacity, now I can be more respectful of you and of me and know there's a, a boundary between us and how to manage that by um, not getting pulled into your story and understanding the difference between my intentions and the impact that that has. Interesting, because so what you say and how you mean it is not always what somebody hears. Exactly, and so certainly my intention can be very positive and caring, but if you feel hurt, we need to deal with that and not argue about whether you're hurt or not. You're hurt, let's go from or there. Whether you understand. meant to, just yeah, fix it. Exactly. Okay, where do we go from there? And so then as you develop these abilities, so my heart's open, I have some compassion, I'm being respectful, now I can really start listening from my heart. So not just from my head mm -hmm. to the story, but really at a deeper level and listen more deeply to you. Where is it really coming from? What's going on for you as well as for me? And then also I can listen to my own heart and speak from my heart and speak my truth, but with an intention not to harm or even persuade, but to be heard and understood. Ah, which is really important because you may never mm -hmm. get to the first thing you mentioned, but the second thing we can do for we, one another. Yes, we can understand even if we don't agree. Right. So what do you find the impact is when people are able to do this? Well, I find relationships can be healed, which is miraculous and something that calls me to want to do the work all the mm -hmm. time. There's so much brokenness in our world so many families, there's almost always a broken relationship in the workplace and of course in our communities. So I think with these practices, we can create a, a space for people to reconnect, first with themselves and then with each other. And where do we go to learn this? Uh, we offer workshops, of course. We have materials on our website and um, so there's many ways that people can connect with it and then it's really a matter of practice because it's one thing to get the idea but then to actually do it. That's why the self-compassion is so important because what happens as we work on it and you realize, oh my goodness, I just totally fell into judgment. I was so triggered, I was reactive, I wasn't really listening. It's easy to then shut down and think, so I can't do this. Well, no, I'm learning how good that I noticed that I wasn't really listening very carefully. Uh, so it really takes persistence 
and a commitment. And I'm often quoting uh, Sri Aurobindo, a teacher from, from India, uh, who said once, by our stumbling, we are perfected. So we really need to be willing to hang in there and be kind to ourselves as well as each other. And ultimately, there's, there's no other way to go forward. I don't think we so. We try every other thing, but in, yes. the, in the end. So what's but, the name of the website? But listening. The, uh, it's from the Compassionate Listening Project, so compassionatelistening.org. Very good. We'll put and that on our website yes, as well. Yes, and people, we, we are happy to come to people's workplace, to their churches or synagogues, which it's always very hurtful, but inevitable that there's going to be a conflict in any organization. You get people together, conflict is natural. And the key is how do we enter into it with our hearts open so we can move through it and not get stuck and alienated. And I just want to remind people that the key thing to start with is gratitude and appreciation. Thank you That's so much really for joining important. us. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank Up you. next, how to be ready for an impromptu party at your house anytime. It's sort of my worst nightmare. Pop-up party planning after this. Ooh.